you looking for a new football news app? I can't lie, that's a very odd thing to just say in normal conversation, but I mean, I- Then you've got to make sure to check out One Football down in the description below for all of your news, whether you're a Barca fan, Liverpool fan, or an Alfreton I don't know if it has them, I'm not gonna lie. Just download it anyway. So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of our FIFA 19 Wolves career mode and today we've got some more bumper packed action for you. Last time out we actually finished up with the Europa League and today we'll be finishing up December and that means only one thing and I'm sure you guessed it is that next up is January. We are very very close now being able to make some new signings with this squad so as always when we get towards a new transfer window drop your suggestions for players to sign down in the comment section below. Bit of a difficult one at the moment because we've got a lot of depth and we've got a lot of good players. A lot of players performing very well at the moment. I suppose it's just about trying to find that pushing power to take us from a top four quality side to an actual league winning side because at the moment I think we are just a little bit short of that final quality. Just to uh, remind everyone though, last episode we had four games. We played Fulham and won 3-1 in the league. We also faced West Ham and beat them 4-0 in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals. We beat New Newcastle 4-1, so it was goals galore, and then the final game we simmed and lost against Torino in the final group stage match in the Europa League, but we'd already qualified. Now, your player of the episode from last time was the man who's accumulated the most points out of anyone in that specific award. Joseph Martinez grabs another three points after a ridiculous episode last time out. He was very influential in us scoring so many goals last time out. I think we got, what, 12 goals in total last time? Second place in that vote was Diogo Jota, interestingly, who is now just one one point away from a potential boost in January. And in third place was Ruben Vinagra. He grabs what is his first point in the player of the episode poll after displacing Johnny Otto in a starting 11. But our first game of the episode promises to be our most difficult as we face Manchester City at the Molyneux. Ultimate difficulty, it's the works really. It's a front two again of Munir and Martinez with Zayek just behind them. Sancho and Adama are the wingers. So the informed Diogo Jota not starting, a little bit fatigued going into this one. One. The two sides walk out onto the pitch and judging by Manchester City's captain there, this might not be a full strength City side. Pretty sure that was Aleix Garcia who just led the two sides out onto the pitch and City are not in great form either going into this game. 11th in the table just above Liverpool, Arsenal also floundering in the mid table. Upa Meccano's done well to win that one in the air and Munir now gets the ball. Munir's got runners ahead of him, one of them is Hakim Ziyech, this has got to be a goal and indeed it is. What a finish from Hakim Zayek right into Claudio Bravo's top left corner. And it's a brilliant start for us in the first 12 minutes. Munir driving forward after we win the ball in the air. And it's a simple one, really. Danilo loses his man. Again, the usual with Zayek. He was struggling a little bit to deal with the physicality of Manchester City in the first 10 minutes. Lost the ball a couple of times. But in that sort of situation, he is clinical. Neves into Sancho. We've got the bit between our teeth at the moment. Martinez can play that one inside the fullback to Adama who can cut it back but the ball is way too close for Bravo. He tips the ball over his own crossbar though. Didn't fancy himself catching that one. Martinez just about claims that one off Sandler. He's still going Is Martinez. Trying to bully his way through. Neves has shot his wild though. City look weak at the back. I know Sandler and Eric Garcia isn't exactly the best centre back combo. They've got Claudio Gomez as well playing ahead of them who's another youngster so even they've not even really got much in the way of cover. Over on the right hand side Adama is in a beautiful amount of space. So Dharma Traore, the step over is brilliant. The finish straight at the goalkeeper and the rebound is blocked by Sandler. That easily could have been two, but Adama kind of just plays it straight at the goalkeeper. Foden gives that one away in a dangerous position now. Martinez again over the top here is Adama Traore. The volley is spectacular. Bravo gets it clear. Munir can't put it back into the box. We are absolutely peppering Manchester City at the moment. Bernardo Silva, go Gomez trying to find Aleish Garcia. The shot is blocked by Upa Meccano and well challenged again. We'll come to Foden. Garcia again, back to Phil Foden. Great save from Max Jackson. This is Jaden Sancho, who'll switch the play over to Mbabu. Great ball through there towards Martinez. Tries to dink it over Bravo, but he was just a little bit too close, was the Chilean goalkeeper. That was such an amazing first time ball through as well from Mbabu. I saw the run being made, but I didn't realize Mbabu would really be able to pull it off. He's only a fullback, obviously. Sancho with a lovely little challenge there, and we can break here with Martinez. Adama's got the legs over on the right hand side. 
side. It's Adama Traore cuts back on his left and finesses it in. Oh, that is beautiful from Adama. It's the second goal that we deserve. It's the second goal that he deserves. And after 49 minutes early on in this second half, we double our lead. I think it's Sandler or Eric Garcia who gives it away in a really dangerous area. Sancho with some good pressing finds Martinez. He's got he's spoiled for choice, really. Munir running ahead of him, Sancho running ahead of him. He chose Adama Traore. And I'm glad that he did because he's cut in on his left past Philippe Sandler and he's curled it in. Rupert Meccano there is challenged by Sane, but he's done excellently to win the ball back there. And De Bruyne with a good run. Nobody's tracked it. Maguire's come across to try and deal with the situation. De great save from Jackson after De Bruyne cut inside. Tries to beat him at the near post. It's going to be a corner here on the 72nd minute. We haven't actually made a change yet. We probably ought to. Ball in towards Sane, and it's headed in by the German. And that is a danger sign. The deficit now down to just one goal. It's Raheem Sterling who swings it in. Sane rises highest. He's being marked by Sancho and Neves, to be fair. And it's an unreal header. He's beaten Jackson and Mbabu, who was on the post. This is Sancho. I need a run, really, ahead of me, maybe from Martinez. I haven't got it, though. Sancho tries to turn back and goes down. Lumps clear, though, only as far as Maguire. So we get possession of the ball back again. And this, this suits us down to the ground right now. Neves wins that back. Adama then plays it through towards Martinez. Great turn from him. Still Martinez. Great turn again. That is excellent. It's saved by Bravo. And Sancho half volleys it wide. Oh my goodness me. That Cruyff turn from Martinez has ended a couple of careers there. That was unbelievable. And that is the end of the match. It is a 2-1 victory. A little bit nervy towards the end. But our game management in the last 10 minutes was really, really good. Another three points. And in the end, the goal from Adama was the defining one. And Adama was your man of the match. Nine rating for him 8.5 for Martinez and the other goal scorer Ziek as well with that same rating so game two time now we're going to jump straight into another one and we're facing Swansea away from home at the Liberty Stadium Swansea are obviously newly promoted in this save I think they were second in the championship last season uh, a couple of changes Sanchez in for Neves and Jota in for Sancho Tom Carroll out strength there by Hakim Ziek that is uh interest that's something I've not said very often at all in the course of this series Ziek again this time winning the ball in the air the guy He's everywhere at the moment. Sanchez, though, gives the ball away to Martinez. John with the ball through. Intercepted by Maguire, but bounced off Renato Sanchez. This is Andre Ayew. Well blocked, though, by Harry Maguire. Into Carroll. That's a great ball to find Mackay. Back into Carroll again. Saved by Jackson. A lot of our players there just stopped to, uh, to protest offside. You've got to just play to the whistle, boys. Inside for Munir. Back outside again now for Diogo Jota. Martinez and Mbabu are in the middle. Jota will try and pick out one of the middle. Come through to Martinez. And on the turn, Mulder palms it away. Ziek wins that in the air. Martinez, that'll come through to Jota. Laid off again now here for Munir. And cut inside. He'll find Vinagre. That's the edge of the area for Ziek. Now through to Martinez. Oh my god, what a miss. What a miss that is. Oh wow. In that position, of all the people you would want Joseph Martinez there. And he's gone with the outside of his boot when he really didn't actually have to. He could have just finessed that in with his right foot. Just cushioned it in. First half reflections, we've been pretty average, but Swansea have also been pretty good. It's not that we just keep giving the ball away. Swansea are actually good in possession as well. ZX's been our best player by quite the distance, actually, gonna be honest with you. Oh, Andre I with a great ball there into Nathan Dyer. Well saved by Max Jackson. Worth noting, Andre I was just come off for Jordan Ayew. That's uh, an unbelievable substitution from Swansea. Has that ever happened before? 70 minutes gone, and uh, yes, yeah, we've really not got into gear at all. Radoya there with the head. I don't know how he's managed to get that on target from there. ZX yeah, skips past the challenge, and this now is Joseph Martinez with a little bit of space. Martinez straight though at Mulder. He was being closed down. There wasn't really much on else there. So it'll be another corner again into a similar area. I think Ziek keeper comes to claim, punches instead. Adama, that's into Maguire. Back to Adama again. Blocked. Falls to Munir. Saved by Mulder. Over the goalkeeper's head though from Martinez. And we take the lead. 
with just 10 minutes to go. I can't say it's all that deserved, really. We've not had many good chances at all. But Martinez, who probably had the best chance of the game, actually, the one chance we did have, has now scored. This was way more difficult. The layoff from Maguire into Adama blocked. The shot from Munir saved by the goalkeeper. Swansea will be disappointed because I think Nathan Dyer was in a prime position to at least get something on that. These are the sort of wins you need if we can hold on to them, though, where you have to grind out the result, even though the opposition were probably better than you. And it's not something we're very good at, really. If we're worse in the game, we lose the game. We very rarely play badly and win. This is Munir over the top here towards Diogo Jota, who can let fly, but he drags it wide of the far post. And that is the end of a game which we had to work very hard in order to win. The three points go back to Wolverhampton. It's a 1-0 victory over Swansea. A slim one and one that didn't really see much of a good performance, apart from the man you saw that just there, actually. Hakim Ziyech performed very, very well indeed. An 8.2 is enough for Martinez to get him out of the match. Mbabu and Ziyech also with good ratings. Upa Meccano and Maguire were also very solid. We've got a couple of important contracts expiring at the end of the season. We've got Ryan Bennett, Jean Moutinho and Helder Costa out of the players that can leave in this transfer window, but Helder Costa is really the only one that I want to renew, I guess, right now. Maybe maybe Ryan Bennett, but he doesn't really play all that often. We're definitely going to give Helder Costa a new contract. We'll delegate it. 70k, I think it's probably... Oh, no, 65. Let's give him 65. I think we could just about squeeze that, maybe. There we go. So going into game three, that two-win streak in this episode now puts us within just four points at the top of the table, Manchester United. We've got Everton next, who are sixth in the league, and then after that, to, uh, to round out the episode, we face Bournemouth. Bournemouth were all the way down at the bottom of the table. So without any further ado, it's time to get into game number three of this episode at home against Everton. This is going to be a big challenge, I've got to say. But without too much in the way of injuries or stamina issues, we can feel the pretty much identical team to the first game of the episode. Two more wins in this episode and we could seriously be knocking on the door of top of the table. We're in really good form. I think we've this actually might be our best winning streak of the series. I'm just trying to think. I know we lost against Torino, but do we count that? Because that was only a sim game. We didn't actually play it. But Everton will not be an easy task. Like, Everton are a very, very good side. I don't see Richarlison playing in this game. But they've got a man called Henry coming forward here. That's into Hazard. Through to Sigurdsson. And we are one goal behind. Fair play. All right, Sigurdsson... Gives Everton the lead. A little bit disappointed with one element of that goal. I'll show you on the replay. So it takes five minutes for Everton to prove just how much of a challenge they are. Look at this ball, though. That def... I'm, I'm sorry. Somewhat, I, that angle was horrendous for it. But if you want to take a look back, I'm pretty sure it's Mbabu. Definitely, definitely could have got on the end of that ball or something. Or just ran past the ball. Nemanja Matic now. Nemanja Matic with the shot. It's a great save from Jackson to deny the Serbian. This is Sandro Ramirez through to Henry. And I I don't know how that was an offside. Jackson did excellently to smother it, but surely that was that was offside. Surely. Adama, that's behind Ziek. Oh my word, this passing. Come on, guys. Not much in the way of runs going forward. This is Ziek, though, and he loses the ball to Matic. I am... This is ridiculous. And such a poor performance. Nobody can pass. Nobody can string two passes together. I don't know if we need a formation change. I'm tempted to run 4-3-3. I know, in theory, that is more defensive or... I don't know, it's it's less, you know, we've only got one striker up top, but Munir has been absolutely awful. Without any further ado, off comes Munir. Andreas Pereira replaces him and we switch to a 4-3-3, which I know won't help Martinez. He's now the lone striker, obviously, but he wasn't getting any help from Munir in the first place. The guy was just giving the ball away constantly. Might help us a little bit in terms of midfield now to have a, one more body in there. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. This is central for Martinez. Ziyech running through here is Ruben Neves. This is a great chance for Ruben Neves and that is the equaliser. Great stuff already in this first half. Hopefully, those tactical changes coming into effect. And with our first shot of the entire game, we have equalised. We don't deserve it at all, based on the balance of play. But it's a really good ball through from Ziyech into Neves. Again, maybe the 4-3-3 helping there. One extra body in midfield. And we're back level in this game. Right, hopefully, we can now get a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence and actually start playing some football. So we've got a bit of confidence in the game, boys. Lovely stuff. Vinagra there through to Hakim Ziyech. Oh my word! 
that was dipping and diving all over the place from the Moroccan. Over there towards Joseph Martinez. Bit of space for him, saved by Pickford. Torgan Hazard here into Davies. This is great passing from Everton. Sandra with the flick up and shot wide. Nagra inside here for Ziyech. Andreas Pereira's making a great run over the top. This is Andreas Pereira. Well taken down, but the volley was always rising. Fresh burst of pace is going to come on the left-hand side with Jaden Sancho replacing Diogo Jota. Our first change in this game has really, really had a big impact on proceedings, how we've played and obviously just grabbing the goal generally, but this could even be yet another, hopefully. This is still Ruben Vanaga actually to the edge of the area for Hakim Ziyech, but he goes with his right. You had the opportunity to hit that on your favoured left foot and instead he slices it wide on his weaker one. Rugani under pressure from loads of Wolves players, great pressing. And Babu wins that in the air, he kind of had to. Martinez gets there ahead of Ziyech as well. This is Sancho, twisting and turning, finds Andreas Pereira. Not many opportunities now, Martinez, this is Neves. Sancho on the overlap to win it for us and he has! Jaden Sancho, the substitute, has done it. It's a late goal and it has without doubt won us the game. The Wolves players go mental with 20 seconds to go. The Molyneux erupts. We've been pressing and pressing in this second half. And it's again another tactical... I'm going to blow smoke up my own ass, but it's... It's a good substitution, that's what I'm saying. The man off the bench has won it for us. Jaden Sancho is the hero of the hour. We've brought it back from behind against the really good Everton side, who were leading 1-0 after 5 minutes. But after 90 minutes, it is us who take the three points. Having led for so long in the game, having been level for so long in the game as well, we snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Two substitutions, the key points in that game. Absolute limbs there at the end of the game. And genuinely, I think the, the switch to a 4-3-3 was vital in that one. Ruben Neves was man of the match. 9.3 rating for him. He obviously got the, the equalizing goal in that one. Ziek again, very strong. He's been very good in this episode. Been very impressed. I need to get my breath back after that. The gap then at the top of the table comes down to just one point after that last gasp winner over Everton. I don't know whether we can end the halfway stage of the season at the top of the table once again just a reminder we are now into january so feel free to let me know about any players you want me to try and bring in in this transfer window you can see we've got 22.8 million pounds which or 22.28 sorry million quid which is actually quite a lot I'm not gonna lie sell one other player on top of that and we could bring in a really quality uh winger for example or maybe another striker or whatever let me know where we need some depth personally i think the only position we might need some depth in is up front if we're continuing playing two up top Although playing one up top worked a lot better last time. Time though for the fourth and final game of this episode. We're away from home again, this time at the Vitality Stadium to face Bournemouth. Final game of the episode. We'll be making it, well, we're hoping to make it a 100% played game record again. We won three out of three last time, trying to make it four out of four in today's. I can't believe we're in such good form right now. Bournemouth also have the worst home record in the league. Four points only accumulated in eight of the games at the Vitality Stadium this year and they've not won at all at, at all at home this season and we all know what that means that means they're gonna beat us at home we are good it's written in the stars now it's like whenever you play a team that has the worst goal scoring record they thump you four nil on this game every time mate without fail andre silva oh got a man over here at bournemouth the shot comes in and we go behind after five minutes again. Ferran rifles it into the top corner. What was I saying at the start of the game? Ferran then gives Bournemouth the lead. To be fair, we, again, we've started quite slowly. Not as cataclysmically as the Everton game. But we have given the ball away a couple of times. But this is a Dharma Traore in a bit of space here against Nathan Ake. He cuts inside. Still a Dharma Traore, but a really weak effort. Munir. Still Munir. To be fair, he's cut inside. This is still Munir. Great goal from Munir. We've seen barely anything from him in this episode. And right on the cusp of half time, he rifles it into the top corner. Unreal finish from the Spaniard. It's a, I mean, it's a typical cut inside FIFA goal in theory, but he's blasted it in at Begovic's near post. Great work from him. That's what we wanted from Adama Traore in a similar position earlier on. Munir on his left foot, 
No chance for Begovic. There was a couple of players coming across, but right into the roof of the net. And again, it's a late goal in a half of football, this time in the first half. Ball in there towards Gouliar. Well saved by Jackson. Thought he might be able to hold that. Maguire, though, has done so well to keep that one in play. Back to Neves again. This is Hakim Ziyech with the shot. Oh, my word. Almost nestled in the bottom corner from Hakim Ziyech. That's what he can do from distance when he actually chooses his correct foot. Notice that Bournemouth have just brought on Hussam Awar. How many signings have they made in this save? We're only halfway through season two and they've signed a whole new starting 11. I'm going to make a change and you know what? I'm going to go for it again. I'm going to go with the 4-3-3. And this will be a real barometer as to whether we should maybe go back to this formation full time. Adama, still Adama, twisting and turning. This is over now to Hakim Ziyech. Wonderful goal from the Moroccan. He threatened to do it earlier on in the game. He's been threatening to do it all episode with a long range goal. And this time he does pick out that bottom left corner of Begovic's net. Adama with a turn into Neves. One touch from Ziyech and he's got two much space. You can't allow a player of that sort of quality that much time on the edge of the area. One of the Bournemouth players came flying across. We can't do anything about it and we've come back from behind again, this time much earlier on in the football match. We've now got 20 minutes to hold on to the lead like we had to earlier on in this episode against City. Honestly, not sure how Bournemouth are bottom of the table. They've just brought on Patrick Coutrone, two real wonder kids of European football in this Bournemouth side in Hussam Awar and Patrick Coutrone. Maybe they've just not got much in the way of experience. Maybe their team's just a bit too young. Rico plays that one down the line. This is Patrick Coutrone. Ball in is a great one to find. Hussem Awar. I thought Vinagra was going to get that, but Awar ran onto it and puts it under Jackson. With eight minutes to go, we are level. I was literally just talking about Awar and Coutrone being wonder kids and how Bournemouth were bottom with those two team, two players in their team. Oh, oh, Vinagra's getting there and he goes to slide instead of clear the ball away. Are you serious? Oh, that's such an easy clearance. He's easy get in there it goes straight through Jackson's legs it's it's an impossible save for him unless he just gets in the way of it like he's never going to react in time Coutroni out wide there into Lowton going for the one two it's back to Lowton again Willie Bolly there it's into Gosling now into Coutroni and it clips the top of the crossbar with the last kick of the game Bournemouth could have won it and snatched all three points for their first home victory in the end they've got to settle for the draw our win streak comes to an end but that's at least I think seven wins in play games in a row which is definitely a new record in this series and it's bottom of the table Bournemouth who end it for us in fairness they played well I think the draw is probably the fair result but it looked as if we were going to complete yet another comeback with that goal from Ziyech. Unfortunately, a defensive mistake from Vinagra undoes it. Man of the match was still our second goal scorer, Hakim Ziyech. He's had a phenomenal episode, in fairness. Probably his best in a Wolf shirt. Ruben Neves, 9 rating for him. Vinagra got an 8.2. It's a shame, actually, because he was actually really good defensively, apart from that mistake. So there you have it. A slightly disappointing way to end the episode, but still, 10 points from 12 is very impressive in that episode. And I would have taken it, especially given we were playing City at the start of the episode. Their City rivals, Manchester United, though, still top of the table. Three points clear now of us. It was only one point, obviously, before the Bournemouth game, but we're still a lot closer to the top of the table than we were at the start of play. In the background, though, now you'll be able to see the Hall of Fame. This is where all the accolades are kept for this series, including most goals, which is obviously Joseph Martinez. The assist list, which is a great battle and has been all series, really, between the likes of Neves, Renato Sanchez, and Diare Samaseku. But also, win streak is one that's certainly changed today. Stuff like transfer records, though, could be broken next episode because we're into January now in season number two. So drop your suggestions for players to sign down in the comment section as always. And in the top right of the screen, you'll be able to see the poll for the player of the episode. Whoever you thought was the best player in today's video will be crowned the champion or be given the award for the episode and will gain three points in the race to being a potential booster. Don't forget, you only need to get 10 to get that potential boost in a transfer window. That's going to wrap up today's episode, though, of the Wolves career mode here on FIFA 19. And as you can see, next episode, 
We are bumper packed one. We've got six more games left to play in January. I think you'll see three in one episode and then three in another. We start off with an FA Cup third round tie against QPR. Then a semi-finals of the Carabao Cup against Cardiff, interestingly, followed by a league game against Southampton. And in the first half of that January month, we'll hopefully even make a signing as well, or at least I'll try and set one up for you. If you've enjoyed this episode, though, of the Wolves FIFA 19 career mode, then slap a like on it and subscribe. If you are new to the channel, it's the big red button under the video and it massively helps me out. You can also follow me on social media these days too. My Twitter and Insta are at the official FNG and links are down below but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a great day enjoy yourselves and goodbye I've been smoking and drinking yeah. said the weed and the voice got me thinking skeptical boy I better know when I'm under the influence if I say shit then I meant it all had a flashback when I used to kick ball and the coach told me I went technical man I lost all the air in my lungs and it's like man took a low blow to the testicles now you see the spare time I invested all yeah. to the music dug deep now I'm seeing improvements spill force on the ink on the page and it feels therapeutic yeah